So good morning, everyone. Um, first of all, thanks to all the people involved in the organization of this festival and symposium. I'm really glad to be here. And well, I'm going to share with you a more kind of historical presentation. It's about this uh, very important composer and engineer from Chile who start to create uh, music with computers and technology since the end of the 50s in the 20th century, obviously. So um, to put it in context, I will to uh, talk about a little bit about the historical context of computing in Chile. So everything starts around the, uh, 1929 with the arrival of IBM uh, to Chile. Um, the computers was, um, were used to develop the country in all the economical sense of the world and in administration, management of the state uh, offices. So the first uh, digital computer arrived to Chile in the 60s and was main use in um, all this uh, stuff by the state, you know, treasury, railways, um, the military forces, etc. So uh, in the 70s, um, start the research about computing in the universities. The people in different uh, <coughs> institutions start to create programs to prepare people to work with computers, to program computers. And the main place was the University of Chile, uh, when, where they put the first mainframes uh, in Chile to work with. So then uh, we got this really interesting project that I just going to mention it, was um, a project led by the socialist government of Salvador Allende and uh, he worked with Stafford Beer, uh, you know, maybe you are aware about him. He was the, maybe the main uh, cybernetics of the world at that moment. He went to Chile, worked with the government of Salvador Allende to create CINCO, uh, which is known as well as CyberSyn, a kind of socialist internet to administrate the new idealistic, utopic government that Salvador Allende tried to put in Chile. Sadly, this was um, interrupted by the coup d'etat in 70s, uh, 1973. But the, what I mentioned it is because I think uh, they put a sort of uh, uh, collaborative ethos, ethos, you know, the, this kind of spirit to work in a team. So uh, I think that was um, a great inspiration to Jose Vicente Suar, who you can read here some of the main uh, issues that he developed in his career. Uh, he was uh, a pioneer not only in Chile, in Latin America, engineer and composer, um, working in electronic music, he created stu uh, studios in Germany and Venezuela and in Chile as well. And in 1978, he created Comdasuar, uh, a specific computer for create music, which you can see there. But getting back to the 70s, to the beginning of the 70s, this interdisciplinary color collaborative way of work um, was taken by Aswar and a group of people to develop a very avant-garde project which was to create music with a computer. So they made um, a program in Fortran and they come using a IBM 360 and they create the first computer assisted composition in 71 which was uh, form Formas Uno which is form, Forms 1. By that time, uh, Aswar was working uh, in a residence in USA um, alongside with uh, Leharen Hiller, who was the supervisor for this investigation. So he was very aware of how to use computers to control by voltage some synthesizers. 
so he bring all this knowledge to Chile and start to work with, um, firstly, <coughs> to create a program for the creation of music, uh, which leads to the Formas piece. This Formas piece is a, a composition for a large ensemble. It's almost a symphonic orchestra, and it was played uh, or performed just twice in Chile. One was the premiere in 1971, and the other uh, performance was this year in a historical concert in Chile. And so I can, I want to show you a little extract of the piece, which will lead me to uh, explain a little bit of. <laughs> So, uh, Aswar used the very well known serialistic aesthetic and rules to construct this program. So you can feel this kind of old fashioned uh, style of music, but uh, it was a very personal way to construct, uh, to use this rule. Um, but at the <coughs> same time, he was uh, very connected to the use of uh, the computer in a more wider sense. So he started a new project with the same team who was, uh, it was the virtuoso computer, and it was more kind of uh, educational project. So they used uh, the computer to control synthesizers, playing classical music, pl uh, very uh, famous and classical tunes. And they actually released this LP, which is uh, kind of very uh, weird and historical stuff in all over Latin America. And it's actually, um, kind of uh, iconic, um, very um, often sampled by hip hop artists, techno artists that grab some sounds from this album. And then in 1977 and 1978, he started to construct his own computer, Conda Swark, which is uh, um, uh, this name in con constricted Aswar Analogical Digital Musical Computer has um, its own program, its own software with creativity trigger tools to compose in almost all the styles. You can compose uh, in Western tonal music, um, serialistic music, aleatoric music, whatever you want. And it was really interesting that he released a CD, uh, uh, LEP as well. He used um, uh, black and white TV, has a <coughs> monitor. And they are the specifications of the computer. Very simple, uh, something really, you know, kind of uh, limited ROM and RAM for, for nowadays. But was really interesting, the combination of analogical part which it was the, uh, an oscillator controlled by the computer. And, uh, and no, it's the opposite. The oscillator was a digital one and processed by filters and analog analogical. So you can program something and manually change the, what is the output of the computer. So uh, he composed several music with this computer. The, the species are very, um, in his uh, specific personal style, but at the same time, the LP that I showed you before was more kind of pedagogical as well. So the uh, music that he released in, this, in the LP was classical music and some examples. The, how can you use that? I want to show you another little sample, which is really interesting in our context.
Well, I select this sample because it's quite almost techno style, and it was made in 1978 in Chile, so I think it's a kind of really, really pioneering in that stuff. And it's uh, nothing to do with the usual music that you can find from him. But uh, he tried to demonstrate that the computer can be used for almost whatever you want to do. And that was one of the main goals for Aswar, to get a computer cheaper, no more than $1,000. And he was thinking in that everyone can have a computer at home to perform, to play, to learn, uh, do whatever you want. So uh, there was uh, some years ago an um, attempt by Andres Burbano, who is a researcher and composer from Colombia. And he made a new version of Comme d'Assoir, but it's a software running in this uh, Raspberry uh, machine, programmed in Python with C sound as an engine for this sound, and with Arduino as a controller. You can find more information on that. So it's a kind of rebuild of this computer. So I think that's it all the thing. Thank you very much. And just one more thing, I want to, if you want more information, I can give you my bibliography, but I can, I want to show you this. This is the Pueblo Net Label. It's a Chilean net label that released CDs and online music. Most of the, mus most of the music that you can find in the website is for free to download, and you can find all the music by Aswar for free. You can listen online, you can download, and get more information about him, about him. And you're going to realize that they have a more kind of uh, academic style, but <coughs> even though it's really good music. That's it. Thank you. There is some um, informal stuff. The, for example, the research that the, he yeah. led uh, in USA with Lehar and Hiller, there is some reports, some papers about it. But all the stuff on the computer is more kind of uh, very, very, I don't know how to say, um, informal yeah. handcraft. But there are um, some investigations about him by different researchers in Chile, including me. And uh, actually, we have a um, documentary about him, about the computer. Uh, I'm trying to get the English subtitles for the movie and maybe you know, have a premiere here in one year or more, I don't know. But it's, it's a really, really interesting story. Christine, yes. Hi, thanks for your presentation. And do you think uh, José Vicente de Azuar was influenced by the socialist ideology of the time uh, to design the computer? I think mm, uh, it was influenced not directly, not in a straight word, uh, for, uh, way, but I think most it was influenced, influenced by the, this kind of spirit of collaborative work. That's, that's, the, thing, that's the thing because I put the Cinco project there. Because before it was very kind of <coughs> the lonely guy working, you know, but uh, the people, the team is documented. The people that work in the uh, Formas project and, and after in the comp virtual computer was a group of different people. Designers, programmers, musicians, performers, uh, instrumental performers, all working together to lead this project out. So I think in that way, but not directly. Uh, actually, Aswar was very uh, uh, no political. Uh, well, we know uh, nowadays that he was against the dictatorship, that um, like almost all artists in Chile, but he n never talked about it. That's it.
Okay. Thank you very much. much.